Hey there everyone, I hope you're having an absolutely magical day today and welcome to Municiburg, which is where we are today, making one of those famous items that we've tried before at Disneyland and now at Disney World, one of my favorite sweet treats that you can find in the park it's Jack Jack's Num Num Cookie. Also known as Cookie Num Nums, these chocolate chip cookies are unlike any you've had before. Ooey gooey deliciousness. I'm going to try my best to make them here at home using Disney's own recipe, which you can find in the description of this video. We're gonna try and make them as close as possible. Let's jump right in. The first step in creating Jack Jack's Cookie Num Nums is to brown butter. When I first read that, I was thinking to myself, how do you brown butter? It's, you know, it's butter. Found out you actually do have to put it on the stove top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these pieces, these sticks of butter into small chunks, put them on the stove top, heat it up at medium temperature until it turns brown. But it's very important that it doesn't burn. Apparently you can burn butter, so we're gonna try not to do that today. Let's cut them up and get started. Now when I think of Jack Jack's Cookie Num Num, I think of just this amazing, delicious cookie that in my opinion, it's gonna be extremely difficult to duplicate, but I looked at the recipe and it's actually not that difficult from what Disney themselves have put out. So that's really, really good to know. We don't have any of the uh, the paper, that you know, special paper to put around the outside of the Num Num cookie that you get when you get it in the parks, but if it tastes even close, I'm gonna be happy. Now the recipe that Disney has for the Num Num cookie makes it look amazing, delicious, but if you look on the link that I'm including in the description below, you'll find on Pixar's own Facebook page, they've included little photos to go with the Num Num cookie. <laughs> super, super cute as you're putting your recipe together. And just like that, we've got two sticks of butter ready for browning. You can see I've cut them all up, put them on the bottom. I'm gonna put it on medium heat on the stove top. Now, while the butter is heating up, we're gonna start with the next step. Keep in mind, you wanna keep a close eye on the butter, so don't let it do its own thing for too long, but just enough time to add the next two ingredients to our large bowl. Now we need a cup and a quarter cup of brown sugar and just a quarter cup of white sugar. A little while ago, my mom told me if I don't have brown sugar, luckily we do, but if I don't have brown sugar, what I can do is make brown sugar using molasses and white sugar. I've never tried it before, but it's something to keep in mind. If you don't have brown sugar, maybe that's a solution. All right, there's one cup of brown sugar. Okay, that got packed in there. There we are, and a quarter cup. Continuing to stir here, take a look. It is starting to turn just a little bit brown, not quite there yet. Let's keep on stirring, almost there. Take a look now as we move the spoon around through the bubbles, you can see that butter is starting to brown. It looks really, really good. I don't want it to burn, so I'm gonna transition it off the heat right now, turn off the burner, and then let it sit. We have to let it sit for a little while and cool until it just begins to solidify. Then we can continue with the recipe. The butter is off the heat and cooling now. Let's continue adding to our bowl here. We're gonna add the salt. We need one teaspoon of sea salt. Luckily I have sea salt here. You'll remember my sea salt shaker right there. It actually is a upside down grinder. So you can grind up the sea salt crystals into the little top right there and then pour them into the one teaspoon container. Not quite there yet, need a little bit more. That is a lot of salt. Let me make sure I've got the recipe right. Yep, one teaspoon of salt. That's a, that's a whole lot of salt. I looked at it three times to make sure it's the teaspoon and not the tablespoon, because that looks like too much salt in my opinion. But you know what? That's what the recipe calls for, so that's what we're gonna do. After giving it a thought, the butter that I have is salted. Hadn't thought about that before I poured this in, so I'm actually gonna take a tiny bit off, just a little bit, just like that. So we've, we've still got close to a teaspoon, just under, just under there, that's all right. We can add more if needed. We're still waiting for the butter, but I'm gonna mix these up just a little bit so that they're combined while we wait for that butter to cool. Our sugars and salt is combined here. Let's go get that butter. Taking a quick look at the butter, you can see it's starting to cool down, but it's not quite solidified yet. As we stir it around and smell it, you can actually smell kind of like a caramelized butter in there. I think we got the browning just right. I'm glad I captured that so you can see it on video as well. We're gonna wait a few more minutes before we add it to this bowl right here. But that's something to keep in mind. You can kind of prep that in advance. If the whole family's making the recipe together, maybe get that part ready beforehand and then you'll be ready to go. Let me tell you, that took much longer than I thought, but it is partially solidified. Just as the instructions said, you can see little chunks 
starting to form again. So it is time to pour the partially solidified brown butter into our sugar and salt mixture here. Just like that, there it goes. Right into the mixture, I'm gonna get a spatula to make sure we don't miss any. Don't wanna miss out on any of that deliciousness that is the brown butter right there at the bottom of the pan. There we go, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix all of this together. Now the instructions say we have to cream all these ingredients together, it means that we have to mix them up so thoroughly it basically becomes a cream in and of itself. That's how I understand it. Let's mix it up. Starting off slow to make sure that nothing goes flying out of the bowl. That comes from experience. That has happened to me before, as you have seen before. Okay, here we go. A little bit faster now. A little bit faster now a little bit faster now. Okay, we've been mixing for a little while here, but you can see it hasn't really creamed together yet. We're, we still gotta work on it. So it's kind of a little, still a little chunky here. Tremendous amount of mixing here, trying to get it to cream together. It looks good, but not quite creamed together. Maybe I did something wrong. Let me double check the directions here. You know, it's possible that, I wasn't supposed to add the brown sugar, but it says cream, butter, sugars, and salt. It doesn't say not brown sugar, but we're gonna, we're gonna keep on mixing for a few more minutes here, seeing if we can cream everything together. If not, we'll just keep going and we'll assume that we can just go with that. Okay, we have mixed it up as far as it will go, but I don't see it getting light and fluffy in there. I think it's because I added the brown sugar too early, but I don't think it's gonna be a big issue. I really don't. Taste will tell. We'll be able to tell with taste. Let's move on to the eggs. We're gonna mix in one whole egg, one only egg yolk, and our vanilla extract. Now the whole egg is simple. Just crack the egg, put it in the little custard cup right there. Make sure there's no shell in the egg like that. <laughs> Double check, no crunchy egg. It looks good and we're gonna add it to our mix. Now that's the easy one, the one of just the whole egg, right? But now we've gotta get the egg yolk and there are a few different ways to get egg yolks, but the way that I have been taught is to break the egg, kind of cut it in half, just like that, and then let the yolk kind of just sit inside, right inside half of the shell there. You see that? Half of the shell. And then move the yolk from shell to shell, letting the egg white kind of drip below. See that? There you go. So you only get the yolk left, and all we're going for is the yolk, not the egg white. Okay, a little bit more just like that. And we've got one egg yolk. There it is. Now we can save these egg whites for an egg white omelet or anything else. Now we need the one teaspoon of vanilla extract, just like that. We're gonna mix it all together. And just like that, we are ready to go with our dry ingredients. Take a look, looks fantastic right there. We need our flour and our baking soda. Now we need two and a quarter cups of flour. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour one cup right in our cup measure right there. And then I'm gonna start mixing it up so that when I have the two and a quarter cups in there, all the flour doesn't spray up in the air as I've experienced from the past, just like that. There's one cup, I'm gonna mix it up just a little bit, not that much, just a little bit, just so that I can kind of mix the beginning part in there so it doesn't fly up everywhere. Mixing, mixing, mixing until it is set. Just a little bit, just like that. And now we're gonna leave this aside for a moment, starting to look like that batter already. And we're gonna add the rest of our flour. There's our second cup of flour, and now we just need the quarter cup. That's a little too much flour there. It's just gonna put some back in there. There we go, okay. We are set to go. A little baking soda as well. We need one teaspoon of baking soda, just about there, just like that. That looks perfect. Oh my gosh, look at that. Looks perfect. One teaspoon baking soda. We're gonna mix all these dry ingredients again very slowly. We don't want it to fly in the air here. So lowest speed, just like that. Making sure everything mixes together and doesn't fly in the air. Once all the dry ingredients are mixed up pretty well, you can increase the speed to make sure that you get all that flour and baking soda into the mix thoroughly. I wanna make sure I get it all off the sides of the bowl right there. I don't want any residual flour or baking soda. Okay, once it's all mixed up, we're gonna make sure we get all the batter off right there and we're gonna mix in our chocolate chips. And the key here is to mix them in at a slower rate. So once you're satisfied with how mixed everything is right there, make sure it's all together, it looks great. We're gonna add in our cup of chocolate chips. We're adding in one full cup of chocolate chips. Oh my gosh, looks delicious. Look at that, oh my gosh. Little extras never hurt anyone. 
on, in they go. Now I know that you can mix this by hand if you want to, go ahead. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this mixer in here on the lowest setting possible for the entire time. I'm not gonna increase the speed just because I don't want the chocolate chips to get all ripped up. And just like that, there is our Num Num cookie batter. Very excited about it. The next step is to form them into small balls, just like this. That might be a little bit large right there, but you get the idea. And then we're going to chill them as the little balls right there. This looks a little bit on the large size to me. We're looking for a standard like scoop size. Think of like an ice cream scoop, tiny bit smaller than that, looks fantastic. You can use any pan you like to put them in the fridge. I'm using one that will fit in my refrigerator just like that. So we're gonna put these little balls right there. I'm gonna transfer them to another pan as soon as they're thoroughly chilled. But for now, we're just kind of putting these little balls together so we can get delicious cookies. Being able to determine what size to make these little dough balls, that's the hard part right there. You just gotta kinda find the size that you think is gonna work best. I'm going on the large size just because I know that these cookies are ooey gooey in the middle. I'm hoping we can get that here at home, but that's what we're going for. I would imagine that the size will determine the flavor of the Num Num cookies. That, that's what I envision, just because, you know, it's, it'll be more ooey gooey or less ooey gooey, depending on how large or small they are, but you don't want them to be too small or too large. Th this, is, this is a guessing game at the moment. I'm not 100% sure. Once we figure out a size, though, I'm gonna try and keep that in mind for the future, just like something like that. So we can put this in the pan, put it in the fridge. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna chill it for an hour, at least an hour. They say preferably overnight. Overnight's actually what you should be chilling them for. I'm gonna chill them for maybe an hour or two, some, somewhere in there, and then we'll get back to baking them. Now I was thinking to myself, why can't we just chill the entire set of dough here instead of forming them into balls and then chilling them? I would imagine it's because, you know, once they're chilled, you wanna put them right in the oven. I would think that that's probably the, the thinking behind it, but I'm not 100% sure, because I know that there's some dough that you can chill as just the dough itself and not have to worry about forming them until after they come out of the refrigerator, but you know, every recipe is different. I almost think we should have made a double recipe there. Look at that, it's something to keep in mind depending on the size of these little dough balls right here. If they're the right size, then I would recommend a double recipe. I'm gonna put these in the fridge right now and we'll come back to it in a bit. Now I'm gonna give those dough balls about an hour, maybe a little bit more than an hour, closer to two, to get thoroughly chilled and then we're gonna come back and bake them. The cookie dough balls have been in the fridge for just about two hours now and the pan is actually kind of cold. I'm gonna put them in the oven at 350 degrees for seven to 10 minutes, probably closer to the seven side, just to take a look at them, see how delicious they look and smell and everything. And we'll come back and take a look. Let's put them on the pan. Now we're gonna start off with three, just three of these cookies, just to, oh my gosh, they're frozen. There we go. To start it on off, just to see how they taste. Maybe they need more time, maybe they need less time. Maybe they need to be larger or smaller. I don't know. I'm gonna test it right now with three of those cookie balls right there on the tray. Put them at 350 for seven minutes, and we're gonna see how they look. Here they are after seven minutes, not quite there. Not there yet. I'm gonna put them in for the rest of the time. I think it's up to 10 minutes, so three more minutes. We'll see how they look. Here they are after 10 minutes. Smells really, really good, but they're not quite done yet, as you can see. I'm gonna put them in for another three minutes and keep an eye on them and make sure they don't get burned. Well, I left them in for another two and then another three, and sure enough, it turned out to be an additional eight minutes. So they've been in there for 18 minutes, and I'm sticking a fork in there just to see if no, it looks like there's still a little bit of dough in there. So I'm gonna put them in for another two. So we're gonna look at at least 20 minutes here, but I'm guessing every oven varies. So 20 minutes for me might be different for you. Keep checking them, that's the key. Check and check and check. It's been just about 22 minutes at this point that they have been in the oven, but they look just about ready to go. I'm gonna take them off the pan and we're gonna give them a try together. Remember, oven times will vary based on your oven. So just keep an eye on them and you'll be in good shape. You want them to look like that or very similar. And sure enough, there they are, the cookie num nums from Munisaberg and Hollywood Studios and all around. I'm gonna break them in half there. Looks delicious. I actually may have cooked them a little too long. It's possible, they're definitely not burned, but you want them a little bit more ooey and gooey. Tough to do though, you're trying to make sure that there's no like dough in the middle, but they cook a little longer on the pan. That's okay, that's all right. We're gonna try it together. I'll let you know how it tastes. Bon appetit. Very, very good cookie. I definitely cooked it too long, so a tiny bit too long. Maybe Maybe like 19 minutes, but it did need a little bit longer than the seven to 10. It was not cooked at all from seven to 10, but a little bit less, just cooking it a tiny bit less. I'm glad I only made three here, because a little bit less next time, but the flavor with the chocolate chips and the brown sugar and the brown butter, 
Oh my gosh. I sure hope you enjoyed today's cooking with Michael. It was so much fun sharing it all with you. Let me know in the comments below if you've given it a try before or if you're gonna give it a try now, let me know how it turns out. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for being a part of the magic with me today. Until next time, have a magical day and bon appetit. Thank <laughs> you.